Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore the 112 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. Now in the last video we finally poured the ballast keel after a lot of preparation uh, reusing all the original lead um, and now it's time to pull it out of the mould and see what it looks like and hopefully get it underneath the boat. Uh, the very first thing we've got to do though is to head up to Squim and pick up the forklift that I've got up there because we're going to need quite a lot of forklifts I think for this operation. So we're going to start by trying to just lift the mould and the keel together high enough that we can get blocks and rollers underneath it and uh, you know every stage of this is a little critical and a little scary just because there's so much mass and weight here so even lifting this up we have to lift it by the the box itself and so we're hoping that the lead keel actually raises with the box and doesn't uh, just get left behind and destroy the sand. So we did manage to roll the keel and the mould across close to the boat using the heavy equipment rollers, they worked really well. Uh, and then we've jacked it up about 12 inches off the ground so that we can get uh, bottle jacks right underneath it and then hopefully uh, make some holes in the bottom of the mould in the sand, get the jacks in the holes and then just very gently jack up the ballast keel out of the mould. Oh, it's moving. It's moving. It's moving. Ah. I think we just need to keep doing that as we bring it up. Just check the check it's not on one side more than the other.
So as always around here, there's a lot of jobs going on at once, especially recently. Um, and while this whole keel process has been going on, there's also been a lot of other jobs going on uh, in and around the boat. So we're going to catch up more with those in other videos. But one job which has been happening, which is to do with the keel, uh, is the modification of some steel cradles. And we, we borrowed these um, and we just have to widen them slightly so they'll actually fit our ballast keel. And the way that they work is that uh, as the keel is lifted, uh, the sides of the cradles actually pinch the sides of the keel and so they keep it stable. The balls are on fire. Now we're nearly ready to actually lift the keel out of the mold now, which is really, really exciting. Um, but before we do that, uh, I'm really happy to say we have another shipwright working on the project with us. And so um, it's time for you guys to meet him. My name is Zeal. Uh, I like to say that I'm from the Olympic Peninsula or the, the waterways around Puget Sound. Um, I have been sailing for most of my adult life and also building boats most of my adult life. Back in October, I was working out in Cleveland, Ohio on a, an atoll ship, having hung out with Leo a couple of times, just living in a, this town, Port Townsend. Uh, had got to know him and gave me a phone call while I was out there in Cleveland and asked if I was interested in being a part of the project, which I was uh, hesitant to, to say no to. So here I find myself working on the Tally Ho project, which I'm really excited about being a part of. Now we've managed to squeeze these two forklifts into the building. They're both higher capacity forklifts than, than Pete's forklift or my forklift uh, because the keel is just too heavy for our lifts. So we've been lent those lifts by Dave Thompson, who you guys met uh, a few episodes ago, and also by another Dave from Dave's Mobile Welding and Marine Repair. Uh, so big thanks to both of those guys. And if you need work done on your boats down here, go and see them. So getting the keel out of the mold uh, went really well in the end. It was a little nerve wracking. It's a, just such a lot of weight to be lifting, even with two big forklifts. We were right on the edge of what they could lift. And now I'm just continuing to uh, surface the top of the ballast keel, uh, just using a, a regular power plane here. And uh, I have waxed the bottom of it and that's really made it a lot easier. Wow. Jack is free. 
Jack is on tank. So the ballast keel is out of the mold. Uh, we're really pleased with how it looks. Uh, it's really clean. The shape looks good. Doesn't look like there'll be much fairing. So now I'm gonna cut it back uh, to its correct length. Now the ballast keel doesn't go right to the back of the boat. Behind the ballast keel, there's a piece of wood. Now originally this joint between the lead and the wood uh, was a kind of mortise and tenon almost, a key. Uh, and so I'm going to replicate that in this new ballast keel. All right, so it's time to get the ballast keel under the boat. So all we have to do is uh, move the keel blocking under the boat, but essentially the weight of the boat is going to be on the keel timber on blocks at the very front and the very back. So we always knew we'd have to actually raise the boat a little bit at some point uh, in order to get the drill underneath the ballast keel to drill the counterbores for the bottom of the keel bolts. But actually considering getting this in here in the first place, I've decided it's actually gonna be easier just to raise the boat a little bit right now. So raising the boat's a pretty simple procedure. We're just gonna have a jack at each end. Uh, just go up sort of an eighth of an inch at a time and then just go around checking all the props, uh, banging the wedges in and got a spirit level tacked to the stern post there so we'll just be keeping an eye on it and making sure we're not tipping to one side or the other as we're going up. I'm staking them, staking them. <laughs> I'm staking the bolt, the threads and the bolts and the nuts. Just marring up the threads and the bolts so they lock, so they're locked forever. And they don't move ever. <laughs> That's what I'm doing, YouTube. It's very scientific. Wow, you're so eloquent in the morning. I thanks, yeah. Yeah, one cup of coffee and I'm a freaking poet. Oh. oh yeah, bud.
So we've got the keel in place, it's pushed up against the ballast keel, it's looking really good and we're just doing a little bit of final positioning now, so uh, we've got it on some greased blocks and the guys are using a port of power, a uh, long uh, hydraulic ram, just to actually push it from side to side, even though it's already pushed up against the keel with a tar in it, uh, just to, to get it flush on both sides. In between the ballast keel and the keel timber, uh, we've got uh, roofing felt or Irish felt and then tar uh, just above and below the felt. Zora. Zora's from Naknek, Alaska. She's a mutt. She's husky and German Shepherd, we think, but we're not sure. Um, she's nine months old. She's been with me since last August. And she's a total sweetheart. Hi. <laughs> so we now have the ballast keel in position and bedded pressed up against the bottom of the keel timber um, and I'm really really pleased with how it came out, how it looks, the shape, the fit, it's all excellent. Um, again I'm so so grateful to, to Doug um, for all his help with making the keel um, and obviously everyone else on the team here and everyone supporting this project from far and wide. I'm extremely extremely grateful and it's amazing to see the boat with the ballast keel. Uh, it completely changes uh, the, the shape, the feel of the boat. Every step like this makes it feel just a little bit more like a boat, a little bit more like Tally Ho. So I'm really, really pleased. I'm sure some people are wondering what we're going to do with the mold, uh, but actually it's already been picked up. Um, a fan of the project who is uh, starting a marine store nearby uh, picked it up to uh, display, I guess, and maybe make a planter out of it. I'm not sure exactly <laughs> what's going to happen to it, um, but it's good that it's uh, out of here and going to be used again for something. So thanks for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who has donated or otherwise supported this project. It does make a huge difference. It means I'm able to make these videos and we're able to keep on doing this work. So I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.